Okay, well, let's get straight to it. Here is the in-depth interview with the Hacken Sporting Director, Sonny Carlson. So, yeah, um, this is an interview with Sonny Carlson, uh, the Bickle Hacken uh, Sporting Director. Yes. Right in saying. Um, on the 25th of September, uh, 2017, uh, for the Nordic Football Podcast. Uh, Sonny, thank you very much for speaking to us uh, all the way from, from England. I really appreciate your time. Always, uh, always. <laughs> thank you. Um, really nice day as well, so we're happy to be here. Um, I wanted to start by, obviously, the first place to start really is yesterday's match. Um, not the best of matches, but uh, what did you make of it uh, in, in, from your perspective? I, I don't remember the game. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> no, it's, no, no, it was... Um... Yeah, it's a terrible game from our point of view, but it's a fantastic game for their point of view. So I give them my congratulations and just say uh, well done to Oiko. <laughs> yeah, that's probably the best place to put it as after a 6-1 defeat. I mean, um, it's a, it's a diff disappointing match, but obviously going into the game, the two teams, it was third against fourth. I mean, what are your thoughts on Hacken's season so far in general? It's, it's been, you know, pretty. are you happy with the season so far? Yeah, we, we struggled in the beginning of the season because we had a, a couple of big injuries and then we were quite lucky in the summer window to get a couple of players that have changed changed the structure in the team and also one of them started to score a lot of goals and then we started to winning a couple of games and then after a couple of wins we were high up in the league. Uh, we've been quite good in the defense all year until these last two games. I don't know if that's... Maybe that has something to do with with that we were... We've been good defence. Yeah. We started to score goals. Maybe we got too big. Yeah. Maybe we wanted to score more goals and forgot about what we were good at in the beginning. So that's why we have uh, two scored and ten, ten in, in the back the last two games. Yeah. <laughs> Not the best. Which feel <laughs> very strange now when we still number four in the league. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I guess that shows how how well the team has done. I mean, um, yeah, to be to be this position in the table is quite impressive. I mean, the club was founded in in 1940 and um, didn't reach the old Svenskan until 1983, I believe. Yeah. Um, how do you and the club in general consider the the evolution of Beko Hakan in in the last sort of few years? You know. Such yeah. a, a big rise. It was a big change like 10 years ago uh, in the club because uh, the structure changed. So the old, I would say the old structure in the club was that there was a chairman running everything. Yeah. And and uh, then he retired and there was a new structure in the club. Mm. Then was also a big discussion about what we wanted with the club. What do, did we want to do with the club? Sure. Was a couple of people involved in that, and and um, <laughs> what happened was really that it was uh, we put uh, all the football positions today are are full time working people sure. instead of instead of there was a chairman coming in the, in on the night after his work <laughs> running the club. Yeah. So it's a big change yeah. in in the club about how the club is run. Um, so I think that's that's why we have now played next year. We're going to be our tenth season in a row in the highest division. Yeah. So it's a it's, it's a structure of uh, how we change the club really to to become. Uh, what, what do we say in Swedish? Uh, I don't know the word in English. Yeah, everybody's so, paid yeah, for their more, work. Yeah, more professional. Not, yeah, more, more professional. professional. Yeah. It's not it's not like you do it for fun yeah. you know, after your normal job. Yeah, exactly. That's interesting. I mean. Um, yeah, as we said, the club has achieved great things in the recent years, and the cup win was obviously yeah. a highlight. Yeah. Um, what are the general ambitions at the moment for the for the team? And you know, uh, are you going above expectations this season so far? Would you say, or is that the new expectation? Or you know, how would you assess the general ambitions of Hacken at this moment in time? The, the ambition is to win the league, really, because it's it's still possible to win the league. The, the money difference in the league is not that big so far that it's not possible to do that. So the ambition is to win the league. Uh, when we do it, I don't know, but it's, it's every year the ambition is there again to win the league or the cup. Uh, we were second in the league in 2012. This year we have been close so far to maybe be up there and fight for it, but it's uh, Malmö's uh, 
yeah, I, I don't think we we don't have the chance to to pick them up yeah. at the moment, but uh, pick them up. So you say that catch them. and catch them. <laughs> yeah. Um, so now I mean, the ambition yeah. is is to win the league yeah. because it's possible. Exactly. I mean, the cup win was fantastic. Um, what are your memories of, of that in particular, and did that give you? A springboard, you know. Yeah, and it's a springboard, and it's also it's like a relief for the club yeah. because now we, we we've been up there for totally maybe twenty years in the highest division, and we have not been winning anything. Yeah. So when you have won something, then you it's like a relief from yeah. for the club that you don't have the pressure on you that you that you have to win something anymore. It's more of that the next one going to be number two. Exactly. Yeah, no, it makes sense. I mean. Hacken's best ever position is second in the league, as you said, I think 2012, as you, as you mentioned, I mean, and the best achievement was the cup win. Um, you mentioned the landscape of the Osvenskan and, and the aim being to win the league. How, how difficult is it to compete with someone like Malmo, who year in, year out can kind of bring in the best players? I mean, how hard is it to challenge Malmo? Yeah, but this is the same in all over the world, you know. Osvenskan is no big difference from the rest of the world. Um, the club with the money... It's normally winning the league more than every, every, everybody else. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, 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 it's like they they took a player now, uh, one of our old players, Carlos Strandberg, that's yeah. been that we sold to CSKA Moscow four or five years ago. Now he was on, on the return here, and we were there and we were interested, yeah. but we couldn't even be interested yeah. because the money was too big totally. Yeah. So it's of course, they have an advantage of uh, their level of the club. Mm. Um, they will go on having that for many, many years. Yeah. But as I said from the beginning, it's, 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 it's still we can still take a cheaper player yeah. or develop our own player. Yeah. And, and in the game last night, I think we had at least three, maybe even four players in the end. That's from our academy. Yeah. Then we, in the last three, four years, we also have sold five, six players to to, to European clubs yeah. from the academy. So that's still the number one thing to do, really, to, to bring on your bring up your own yeah. academy players. It's a great way to obviously generate funds and help improve, I yeah, suppose, yeah. as a club. I mean, um, we'll come on to that in a minute. I'd like to talk about that yeah. in a bit more detail. But mm. you're, I mean. Before we move on to that, you know, is the main aim to be sort of Gothenburg's number one club? I mean, you're above obviously Oysen and Geis are in the second division, and um, EF Core at the moment tenth in the league. Um, Bickel Hacken haven't finished above EF Core since I think 2012. Mm. But uh, would you say that, that that is the sort of aim of the club to be Goth- Gothenburg's number one? The, um, the aim is to be above them every year, really, because if you can do that year after year. Then we will get more and more supporters and more and more sponsors that yeah. to help us to become even better. Yeah. So that's the aim, really, in Gothenburg. Yeah, but it's the aim in Sweden is still to win the league. Yeah. So, but if we can be in front of my Gothenburg's big mm-hmm. team, I've got the Gothenburg every year. Yeah. That will help us along the way to to create bigger opportunities for the club, of, of course. course. Yeah. That's interesting. I mean. Um, Moving on to yourself, you, you became the sports director, I believe, in, in 2009. I think that's correct. Yeah, I think so. I was a coach before that, so I think it was 2009, yes. So tell, yeah. tell us about your journey to, to this position. Like you said, I mean, you played you played for Hecken as well. I yeah, I came 1980 mm-hmm. as a player, so I played 10 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also educated myself to become a PE teacher. Along the way, because wow. it wasn't, we were we were not full time professionals. Okay. And then I also, since I became a PE teacher, also took the, all the coach education uh, that we have in Sweden. And when I was finished with my career as a football player, and I worked as a coach mm. for Hecken yeah. a couple of times for the academy quite many years and then uh, again when we won the, uh, with the academy when we won the Swedish championships 
the first he went out of Allsvenskan in 2006 or something like that, or seven, maybe seven. They asked me again to take the team and bring up the old academy players and see if we could, could do something different with the team. Uh, and when we went up in Allsvenskan, I got, I got uh, the offer to become either the coach or the sport director. And I thought I could maybe be... I can maybe do a better job as a sport director yeah. to change the club's way and yeah. directions. And after that, we've been playing Allsvenskan ever since. Yeah, yeah I mean, so it sounds... So it's a... Yeah. A lot of success. Sounds yeah, like you've had yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of success. Knock on. <laughs> sounds good, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are the biggest uh, challenges, would you say, uh, since you've become the sporting director? You know, what's the big projects, the hardest things you've been doing? The biggest challenge is... To become uh, the people's club, it's not so hard to do the step that we have made when we we, we have we have what do you say we have reasonably good money in the club, and, and we can take the steps we have done. But to become the people's club, that more and more people come and watch us, and bigger and bigger sponsors thinks it's interesting with us. That's the hard hard way because Gothenburg is occupied already with these three teams that is old traditional clubs it's like Manchester City and Manchester United if you start a new club there who who would really go and see their games and that's Beko Hecken in in Gothenburg and along the way we have I think we've gone from 3% 3% of Hissingen, which is 100,000 people here, part of Gothenburg. And I think we today have 15 or 7, between 15 and 17% of Hissingen. So it's a big, big difference in, in, in oh, say 20 years of elite football. Exactly. Um, but so far, it's only maybe 20,000 people in a, in a total area of... 1.2, 1.3 million people yeah. that vote for us. So we need, we need a bigger crowd. Yeah. We really need a bigger crowd. How, how do you go about, about generating that? I mean, it must be, is, is it the success that brings that? or Yeah, the success, Other things. of course. You know, yeah. I, I, we can see in the schools in, in Hissingen that kids today can have a Hecken t-shirt, a Hecken shirt yeah. on yeah. them. But if you go back 10 years, they didn't have that. No. So the success we had with, with the football for these last 10 years have made that possible. But you don't see a Hecken shirt in Gothenburg. Yeah. But you see it in Hissingen now, which is a part of Gothenburg, exactly. an island of yeah. Gothenburg. Um, so it's, if we can go on with that long term, yeah. 10 more years, yeah. maybe it's 30% of Hissingen. Yeah. And in the end, you don't have anything else than uh, a Hecken yeah. Because we still have we, we still have an island to work on, yeah. so I don't. I'm, we are not sure that that's the right way to do it because we, we're going to uh, what to say separate ourselves from the rest of Gothenburg, and they will know oh, you from missing it. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe that's our way then. So, so maybe that's possible. We will see. First step hissing and then next step the world. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but you know, in Goth- in, in Sweden, it's hundred. If you if you if you look at the uh, some of the clubs that have won the league, like Kalmar won the league, that's, that's less than 100,000 people. Elspoy won the league yeah. two times in the last 10 years, I think, or 12 years. They are less than 100,000 people. Halmstad won the league two times in 20 years. They are also less than 100,000 people. So it's, it's possible with, with the supporters of, of uh, a small city to win the league in, in Sweden at the moment. And you can do it differently than, than maybe the big clubs are doing in the big cities. Yeah. But it's uh, Malmö's really taking a, a big step to to be up there all the time. Yeah, I think um, maybe perhaps the Champions League money. Uh, yeah, yeah the Champions League money made a difference, and also the, the new the new arena I got a couple of years ago. And all. everybody is they don't even have a competition around Malmö. And it's Malmö, yeah. and then it's nothing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I want to move on to your kind of. Uh, 
the sporting director model because in England it, we talk about it a lot. It's a very um, topical kind of thing. We don't really have the sporting director model in England, or it's it's coming more now. But before it hasn't really been that that well established. Yeah, managers, yeah exactly. The man traditionally in England, the manager is in control of everything. You know, the yeah, Ferguson yeah, type yeah. runs the club. So, but more and more in England now, the sporting director model is starting to okay, become introduced. Right. Um, various clubs. Mm. Um, you know, for those who might not know or may not understand the, the role uh, in England, what, what are your day-to-day -day responsibilities uh, as, a, as a sporting director, you know? I think that it's quite a new, quite new in Sweden also. It's like, it's only maybe 10, 15 years, or maybe 15 years old, the sporting director role in Sweden. Um, and I think it came out of that the manager or the coach, we, we didn't have managers here, we had coaches, but they ran it like managers. They, they brought in the players, they did everything around which player is going to play here, how we're going to play the game and so on. And I think the clubs were a bit frustrated about this because suddenly when you were lost in the league and you sacked the coach and there's a new coach coming in and he's going to bring in his, his players and then they're going to change the way of playing again. So when we, when we changed the club, uh, when we went up the last time, like 2009 then, when I was the coach, the idea was to never let the coach get the grip, total grip of the club anymore. More of that, that uh, the club will run uh, the idea how how we would play sure. uh, we need to play like Mikko Hecken for instance we need to play attractive football <laughs> wasn't so attractive yesterday <laughs> but we need to play attractive football to create a bigger crowd come and watch us exactly. and we have scored lots and lots of goals in the last 10 years we've played fantastic football uh, been up there many years in a, in a, quite high in the league um, to create more, and that's that's Beko Hecken that has set the idea that we we need to play yeah. an offensive, offensive kind of football. Uh, we also took away uh, the responsibility for the for to buying players from from the coach. I don't buy a player if the coach don't want him, okay. but we buy him to a, a system that is Beko Hecken's. You know, we need players that can make the difference. We, of course, we need defense players, and you know, but we, we, we want to have players that make the difference. And, and, and in a di discussion with the coach, uh, the club always have the last word. Yeah. So you were mainly kind of involved with, with the transfers, yeah. and then you kind of suggest them to the manager, or, or yeah. the other way around? Or? Yeah, he can suggest to me also, yeah. but the club is still... Um, what do you say? The club always have the last word. Yeah, sure. So that's what I do, really. I, I take the board's responsibility down to me and, and run the club's ideas through the coach. Right. So when we bring in a coach, we tell him that this is what we want from you. Are you, are you willing to go that way? And we don't we don't change his... He still has his, what do you say, artistic uh, freedom of course. with the team. I don't go down there and say he's going to play and he's going to play and he's going to play. But but uh, if if he leave leaves us like Mickey uh, Mickey Storm has has uh, Beko Hecken at the moment so as a coach, he has three years on a contract. And after these three years, and he leaves us, we are still running the business. We don't lose the speed or the continu continu what do you say continu continuity. Yeah, continuity. Uh, uh, of the club mm. and I think that's the important thing with how we work but if you go if you compare to England you see all many managers sit there for a long 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 time so they are almost like sport directors anyway yeah. like Wenger and Ferguson and it's only the clubs that don't really have a success that sacks, yeah. sacks people all the time and they shouldn't have managers they should have a sport director. yeah exactly i think that's the the way it's going now because we, there's more sacking so you get now you need a sporting director i think in the premier league so people are kind of talking about it a lot i mean yeah otherwise they work so short time with the team they work they work they work for their own their own best with the team they get at the moment so it's uh, i think it's i think it's really important to 
but I can understand that you know, it's, it's it's not so easy to change no. traditions. No, I mean I, I think in England the main problem is that, or the perception of the problem is the kind of um, the ego thing maybe. So the manager kind of being not allowed to maybe buy certain players that he might want, and that some managers in England maybe find that unacceptable. Um, have you ever had any conflict with managers about wanting to buy a player? Is there any ever conflicts in that yeah, sense, yeah. and how are they resolved? Of course. The, the old coach, he was here for eight years, beat the others on his... We, of course, we had conflicts about players. He was more offensive than I really was as a, as a representative of the club. Yeah. So I wanted to buy, buy more <laughs> defense players into the team so we shouldn't let so many goals into our own goal. We scored a lot of goals, but we, we really, really were bad sometimes in the... Yeah, I think we, we scored most goals many of the seasons in Alsvenska. <laughs> we also let in like we were in the bottom of the league, but we were never in, in the bottom of the league. So we had big discussions about bad football players. <laughs> but good defense plays. Yeah. So, of course, we have discussions yeah. about that, the conflicts about that. Um, how is the scouting handled under a sporting director model? I mean, do you have a team of scouts that you kind of send out to watch, or yeah. how is that the scouting side of things handled when you're trying to identify players? I think it's very different in different clubs, but we have a, a scouting team that scouts our neighborhood, okay. and our neighborhood is, what do you say, one hour from here mm. and around here because we think the idea to bring players yeah, closer to home maybe makes more people come and watch us. Sure. Um, but it has changed along the way because as we were not as big as club as we are today, mm. 10 years ago. We had more we tried to have more foreign players before because the Swedish good players they didn't really want to play with us. They wanted to play in the bigger club, so we, we needed to bring in foreign players to take those positions of the Swedish players. And, and so we did with different... Uh, we had the Brazilian cooperation with Cruzeiro for a while. We, we had the Ghana cooperation with Right to Dream for a while, Manchester City's club in, in Ghana. Um, but it, it has yeah. changed along the way, yeah. so now we have less and less foreign players because we can get better Swedish or better better Scandinavian players, and that are easier for us to to take care of. Sure. Um, so our scouting starts in our own academy from the beginning yeah. because we have a good academy. And whatever we can bring up there is most that's the most important. Yeah. And then we maybe take one or two players from the scouting network close to close to home, close to Gothenburg. Yeah. Every year we maybe take two players from first division or second division in, in Gothenburg. And then we also try and take players from Allsvenskan teams that are maybe not as big as we are. You know, if you like a player in OFC, for instance, or... or uh, like Otida Bay, when they went out, we took Jan Oviere, won the Swedish yeah. scoring league, and we took Mohamed Abu Bakari. Yeah. And from last year, we took Crespo from uh, Örebro. Yeah. So now we don't even bring the foreign players from, from yeah. other countries. We bring them from Sweden yeah. instead, because they're already here yeah. and play for another club. So things have changed along the way, but the scouting is, is more in Sweden these days than it was when we started this 10 years ago. I, I think I spent two months a year in, in Brazil from sure. the beginning. We had five, and uh, we have had seven Brazilians in the team 2009, I think. Now we have one. Yeah, Pauline. Yeah. I mean, he's back. He, he was yeah, the exactly. First he was, yeah, yeah. I mean, how, what would you say are the signings you've been most happy with in your, in your time at the club? Maybe the fondest memories uh, of a player, or, you know, maybe from the academy, but what signings would you say were? Stick in your mind as for the heck of fans. The most fun signing was uh, Lugano, yeah. Diego Lugano, because he's a legend, really. Uguay, yeah. he, he still plays in his place in Sao Paulo at the moment in Brazil. I yeah. was quite curious about why he came here, but he had a big injury. Yeah. And he wanted to recover from it and he wanted some time in a 
smaller club for him to to get back to in shape. Yeah. So yeah, suddenly he was here. So suddenly he was here. That was really strange <laughs> because it's uh, you know played hundred games as captain for the Uruguayan team, playing World Cup three times or four times. So so it was <laughs> that was quite fun. And then then we found. Boris Maid, who won the Swedish Scoring League in uh, 2012, I think, when we came second. He found him on, on a backyard here, played a tournament with the English school team. Yeah, um, I think I know him in England, yeah, Hartbury. Yeah, Hartbury Academy, yeah. Academy, yeah. College. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah college, was. yeah. <laughs> uh, and he played with them here. We saw him score a lot of goals against the Gothenburg team, and one of my scouts called me and said, yeah, this guy here scoring a lot of goals in, in the English school team. The next game I saw him and I asked the coach there who he was. And he was from Right to Dream. Uh, maybe not good enough in football, but smart enough to go to school instead. Okay. But he was good enough in football for us. So. Now he plays in still in Lorient, I think. Yeah, in France. It was close to go to England. There were a couple of clubs interested, yeah. in, but they didn't, didn't happen. They wanted too much money for yeah. him. It's still a possibility. I think he's um, he's quite highly highly rated. But uh, yeah, yeah, I haven't I haven't really seen uh, if he's going on scoring goals because they went down in Lorient into yeah, the yeah. second yeah. division in France, and I think he will lose the lose the what do you say qualities along if he doesn't play higher up. Yeah. Not maybe quality, but you lose lose the momentum. Yeah. I mean, the Gothia Park Academy, uh, you know, it's a fantastic facility. You know, we're here now and looking around, and and the Gothia Cup as well. The affiliation um, yeah, yeah. must help in terms of there's so many f- foreign teams coming to play mm. in in such a big youth tournament. Um, they're big strings to Bickle Hacken's you know um, setup. Has that helped in attracting players? Do you think and you know the Gothia Park Academy especially is really nice. Facility. Yeah, the academy has changed. Uh, the view of the club, yeah. really. Uh, but the Acad- uh, they go to a cup, uh, which is the world's biggest tournament, football tournament, youth football tournament. We 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 don't have an. We don't like to scout that tournament. Okay. Yeah, I think we only have taken one player from that tournament in all the years. Wow. Because we don't want to be involved in. That we have our own tournament and, yeah. and bring in here players and then we scout and take players from it. So I think it's more other clubs that have taken players from <laughs> that tournament than we have. Because it's an idea we have that don't do that. But in Warriors' case it was it was more natural because he he didn't even play for a team. Yeah. So that was it's an easier to do that. I also remember that I think the Liberians that we had for a while, they stayed on because they couldn't go home because they had a civil war. When they played here, mm-hmm. the civil war started in Liberia, so they couldn't go back. So the whole team were here for six months. I think. Wow. But they didn't play for us. They played for another club here in Sweden who take, took care of them. Mm-hmm. And they stayed on and a couple of them were really good. So we took them from the other club. Wow. So it was... Uh, Three Liberians that stayed on and played for us. Dule Johnson was one of them. Yeah, Dule yeah. Johnson, Dio Williams, Jimmy Dixon. Yeah. I mean, Leah, a final a couple of questions, obviously. I really yeah. appreciate your time as well for talking to us. I mean, um, Beko Hakan has, a, like I say, a really good reputation for the in terms of the academy. Um, tell us a bit more about the academy structure because you have a lot of players coming through from there. Um, Daleho is you know, one who we've talked about on the podcast as a really upcoming talent. Um, in England, the academy system is a bit under debate because we find it hard to maybe develop players between sort of 17 to 21 to get them into the first team of the Premier League because the level is such a big jump. Um, so tell us about the academy structure here and you know, for Beko Hacken and how much of an emphasis is on that. Yeah, I understand the problem in, in Premier League because the quality is too... It's too big. The, the quality is fantastic in the Premier League, so of course it's almost impossible to to bring up your academy players in that uh, environment. Yeah. We have a better environment for our our academy because 
we need to trust in our own academy with a couple of players every year. Yeah. If we don't do that, we will be in problems. And we, we had to start a new idea about how to run the club. But if, you can see every year that we let players go that maybe compete with one of our academy players. We don't try to bring in what is that, established players in the way of our academy players. And I think that's the way to run it. Because if we start to do that, we will not get players. For all, all the players in our academy, it's not from the club from the beginning. They come along the way. So when they're 15 and you're a good player in Gothenburg, you say, I can go to Beko Hecken because they let players up yeah. in the first team. Or when you're 16, the same thing. You're 17, the same thing. We can see that players from smaller clubs around us, but really, really good players, they take the way through us because we that's the way we work with the youth players, with the academy players. You can If you're... If you're an intelligent football analytic guy in, in Gothenburg, you can see every year that we do stuff that they say, oh, they, they let him, this guy go. And sometimes that's because we have a youth player behind him. So that's uh, really a way of thinking. When Waris Mayid got his shirt, we sold Ranegi to Malmö. Yeah. Ranegi was uh, won the scoring league the year before. We sold him to Malmö and everybody said, how can they sell him to Malmö? How can they sell him? Because he's a fantastic player. Yeah, we sold him to Malmö because Boris Maid was ready to take the step. Yeah. And as, as long as Ranegi played, Boris didn't have any playing time. As soon as Boris got his uh, playing time, he won the scoring league too. <laughs> then we had problems because then we didn't have the, the next guy. You need chances, basically. Yeah, yeah but it's, that's how we run the business, really. You know, Joel Andersson who is fantastic right back, right? What's that? Right, yeah, right back. Yeah. He's he's twenty years old, and this year we only had one. Should I bring in one ahead of him, or should I bring in one to compete with him, or one that shouldn't take his position? So we both brought, took in one that competed with him, not to to. Take him out. Yeah. That helps the development. Yeah, and I think that's that's necessary for us to do like this. Definitely. I mean, yeah. So the final question, I suppose, then is who who are the talents we should look out for in uh, Hecken Academy, maybe in the years to come, if the Nordic Football Podcast listeners want to know who who's next, kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have a couple of players. You will, will be Jule Andersson will be really good. The left back Eggson Binako will be really good. They are both. Exxon played the under-21 championship last year. Ewell is in the under-21 team now. Mm -hmm. uh, Dalahu also is in the under-21 team right now. There's another one coming. He was the captain for the 16-year-olds. Kevin Ackerman. He's, yeah. he's already in uh, the first team. So maybe to next year, maybe I will do something that makes him close yeah. to the First eleven. He made his debut, I think, already. Like yeah, he made years. his debut. He made his debut. Yeah. Yeah. He's number five in in Sweden, yeah. all time, yeah. all time youth. And there's been rumours of Barcelona and teams like that. Is is that true? Or no, you're not, uh, not what I know. <laughs> Nobody ha have have said anything to me about that. So fair enough. We'll keep an eye out for them in the future. Yeah, <laughs> okay, well, uh, Sally Carson, it's fantastic to speak to you. Thank you so much for your time as well, and uh, appreciate it. And uh, Thanks a lot. Thank you. That was Sonny Carlson on the Nordic Football Podcast five years ago, the former sporting director at B Corps Hecken. Once again, we thank him for his time and, and we decided to re-release it because it felt very fitting following Hecken's uh, title win this season in 2022. And listening back, like I said on the main episode this week, I almost uh, had some, some hairs on the back of my neck started standing up because some of the things that he said there you know, he's predicted that they won the title. We heard their aims and ambitions. Almost you could feel, sort of listening back five years ago, that the seeds were being sown, ready for this sort of title win. And uh, like I say, I hope you enjoyed uh, listening to the re-release of that episode. And um, 
Thank you very much once again to Sonny Carlson for that fantastic interview. We'll be back for more very soon with the Nordic Football Podcast. Uh, once again, well done to Biko Hecken on their Alsvenskan 2022 Championship.